Well, hello. Today I'd like to give you my first impressions of a vintage Marcant pen. This is a Marcant 165, and of course the name Marcant means we're headed over to the Deutsche Demokratische Republic of Germany. Uh, East Germany. Yeah. <laughs> so that's always kind of fun. That's kind of my ballywick of pens that I really enjoy. Are those uh, from the other side of the Iron Curtain that uh, the Western market isn't as familiar with. So let's take a look at it. So it arrived in this original box, which I thought was nice. Marcant is the name of the company. Scheib Goreta is uh, writing implements. So Marcant writing implements. DDR, Deutsches Demokratische Republic, which I probably butchered it. Uh, and then on this side we have basically telling us it's a set of two pens, although I'm told that that's a, kind of an old-fashioned way of saying it. I, I asked if it was maybe because it was East German, and the person I asked, uh, who's not a linguist but is a native German speaker, said, no, it's probably just because it's an old pen. So we should be getting two pens in here, but we don't. And that, I think, is just a part number. I found this uh, angled box kind of interesting. And as near as I can tell, it's, oops, and the pen escaped. <laughs> near as I can tell, it's supposed to be that way. So uh, I only did get one pen out of this. Now this is it. It'll not... Uh, super exciting, which I'm totally okay with. Uh, the pen, when you look at it more closely, we have a plastic black finial. Nothing on that finial. Uh, here on the cap, it says Marcant 165. Nothing on the barrel. The barrel does want to unscrew though, but it's a slip cap and it reveals a hooded nib. which is a bit rounded. Uh, open it up here. This is a pretty standard, I don't want to call it a converter, but a filling mechanism for a lot of pens from behind the iron curtain. Uh, some of them can be unscrewed. Some of them I have not figured out how to get them out. I almost feel like they're glued in. And when that's the case, I'm not sure how to fix those pens because I have a few pens with this that I can't fix. This one luckily didn't seem to need any fixing. It does draw water very well. I, you know, I, I did a little cleaning on the pen, but not a lot was required. So, you know, first do no harm. So let's ink this bad boy up. Lots of nice little bubbles as I go down. And it's pulling some ink up. Let's do it again. The ink, by the way, is Rohrer and Klingner Verdura, which is a lovely green color. I don't have any vintage East German inks, and uh, I'm okay with that. I'm going to pause the video for a minute and go get some bread out of the oven. All right, let's see how this thing writes. I'll just mention that uh, you can get a lot of very good pens from behind the Iron Curtain at quite a decent price. All right, so my first impression is that it is a tiny bit scratchy. You know, I'm eyeballing the nib right now. I don't see much. Maybe something will jump out at me on video. Uh, I'm just going to give it a quick look under the loop. But you know, my, my principle of first do no harm. We don't want to harm it. We don't have to. So any nib smoothing and stuff. Nib straightening. Do that after you find out if you need it. So I'm not seeing... You know, I'm not seeing much with my eye there. The tines look slightly out of alignment. But not horribly so. So, 
quick freebie lesson on nib straightening. Sometimes all you need to do is just use your fingernail, and just push on it slightly. You may end up with an ink, but yeah, whatever. So this is Roar and Cleaner. Oh, that helped a lot. Still not perfect, but not nearly as scratchy as it was. So, totally worth doing. All right. Not a flex nib. I doubt it's even gold. I feel like I could do a little bit more nib straightening there, but not right now. Yeah, the other time a slight push forward maybe okay so flex let's do let's check its uh, wetness and flow well, I think you can already tell this is a, a wetter pen actually you know looking at it I I don't know that nib the the tip on the nib just seems to be tipped downwards Definitely has a sweet spot. Smear test. Unbeknownst to you, I uh, edited it out, but I did do a little more nib straightening. Now, at least under the uh, loop, it looks even and it feels much better. Uh, reverse writing. By the way, very wet. This is kind of a wet pen. Wow. <laughs> That's really smooth. Uh, much nicer than the other direction. And the world famous Pierre Gustafson test. There may have been a little skipping in the horizontal strokes. But mainly it's just telling me that it's still not even. All right, so my feeling on this pen is it does need a little bit of nib work yet. I'll uh, play with it, but this is a first impression. First impressions change. And this is my chance to find out. And, you know, the thing is, I'm doing the nib work now that I know it's needed. Rather than, oh, those tines aren't aligned. I'd better fix that when I don't know how it writes. Because first, do no harm. If you don't have to do a repair, don't. Well, let's see how it fits in the pocket. It actually goes in quite nicely, so I'm pleased with that. So, hope that was interesting, hope it was useful, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.